What's going on, people? Mike C-Town here with our episode of Records and Ramblings. Um, I guess this is kind of sort of rambling. I threw my back out about a week, fucked it up real good. Uh, I haven't been able to do much except for lay around on the couch and watch TV. But um, I decided, you know, fuck it, since I can at least kind of sort of sit up, uh, I may as well show you guys some records. So that's what we're going to do. First record I'm going to show you, this is the self-titled record from The Carbonus. Um, Carbonus is an awesome punk band from Atlanta. Um, picture uh, a little bit of the Dickies mixed with a little bit of the Ramones, um, mixed with maybe a little bit of the Adolescents, and you have the Carbonus. Uh, they're made up of some, some, some real good dudes, man. Um, Greg here was in a band called Necrolust years ago that I've talked about before. Um, same with Clay here, was also in that band. Um, those dudes were way into black metal before anyone in the scene was into black metal. It's, it's crazy. Um, they kind of unintentionally influenced me to check out black metal way back in the 90s. Um, Jesse here is also in a band called Gentleman Jesse that's fucking great. And um, yeah, and they're also in another band called Gigi King, which is also great. Um, so yeah, some Atlanta greats here. Um, this dude is also in a band, but I don't remember which band off the top of my head. I think he's in Beat Beat Beat, if I'm not mistaken. But anyways, yes, this is a fucking great record that you guys should check out if you want to check out some Atlanta punk rock. And the other dudes in the band, I simply just don't know. Um, anyways, yeah, next record I'm going to show you, this is... The split between Celtic Moon and uh, Waffen Y. I don't know how to pronounce the other band. Um, that's the other band, if you can read that and pronounce it for yourself, because I can't. Um, these are two German bands. Uh, this record is out of print, but it is the demos of each one of those bands. So I got it for the Celtic, uh, the Celtic Moon material, which I absolutely love. But uh, their demo is called My Illusion of an Eternal Winter. And this is the only thing that Celtic Moon ever released. And the guy passed away, unfortunately. I don't remember what year, but he passed away. That demo is one of the best demos I've ever heard when it comes to black metal. Um, it originally came out in 1996. Uh, it's just some raw, nasty, vicious, ugly black metal. The other band, Waffen Way, uh, maybe, uh, they are fucking awesome too. More super raw, ugly, nasty sounding black metal. They actually remind me a bit of early Dark Throne mixed with Burzum at times, but it's really good. Comes with this uh, insert here, and as you can see there, it is uh, number 166, I believe. 166 out of 400 copies. So I'm really excited to have this. Records on Black One Bother showing you that. Um, I've seen this go for quite a bit of money, but I actually got my copy for pretty cheap. Yeah, if you've not heard Celtic Moon, make sure you check that project out because it's fucking great. And the other one as well. All right, the next three records are gonna be by the same band, and that is Gizm. And I realized that I've never shown any of my Gizm records, and uh, Gizm is one of my favorite punk bands of all time. And um, yeah, I'm gonna start with Detestation. This is their debut album. Um, yeah, this is probably my favorite album of theirs. It's some of the ugliest punk rock that you'll ever hear. And uh, there's a reason why they appeal to punk kids and metal kids alike because they just have that kind of metal edge, but they are still clearly a punk band. But yeah, if you listen to this, you can clearly see why due to her into black metal are also into this band because it kind of sounds like early old black metal. Um, especially if you like stuff like Hellhammer, shit like that, you'll definitely love this. So yeah, if you're some super serious black metal nerd and you've never gotten into any punk bands, um, I definitely say Gizm is a great place to start. This is another Gizm record that's fucking coming apart because it's stupid. Um, yeah, this is MAN, Military Affairs Neurotic. Um, yeah, and that is a penis. Um, anyways, records on black won't bother showing you that, um, but it does have some nice center labels there. Um, if you can 
make that out. Hopefully the camera is not totally blowing that out with the lights. Anyways, um, this is their second album, um, and it's a really odd record. It's a huge departure from what they were doing on Detestation. This one is more, um, it's still punk at heart, but it's more of a heavy metal record. You know, it's almost like a heavy metal band discovered punk rock and decided to take their stab at making a punk record. Um, but yeah, you can clearly hear um, the influence of that record on bands like Integrity, you know, especially on Integrity's Those Who Fear Tomorrow, um, and even up until recent Integrity records, you can clearly hear the Gizm influence. But um, it's great. The only problem I have with um, MAN is the recording is kind of bad. Like the guitars are really low in the mix, the drums are loud, um, it almost sounds like it's live. But it's still fucking awesome, you know, like the weird kind of industrial influences that are on that record are also really, really fucking cool. Oh, and both of those copies are definitely bootlegs. They're clearly unofficial because originals run you about $300 a pop. And I don't know anyone that, well shit, I bet you if I knew anyone that had copies of them motherfuckers, probably Eric Bauer's ass. I bet Eric Bauer has fucking OGs of that shit. I think he showed a while ago, um, I forget which record he showed, but I, I'm pretty sure he showed an OG of some Gizm record. Um, but anyways, shout out to Eric Bauer. That's my man. But anyways, this is another Gizm record. This is Human Condition. And this is a compilation of a whole bunch of comp tracks, couple bonus songs, uh, great stuff. Some of it's pretty raw sounding, and I could definitely see that stuff appealing to black metal fans. Some of the songs on this actually remind me, legit, of like Mayhem's Live in Leipzig stuff. So if that is your jam, definitely check that out. But yeah, this is the nice little insert that it came with. This is also a bootleg, but all of these sound pretty fucking good because it's not like Gizm ever had like some amazing <laughs> recordings or anything. Fucking awesome insert here. Ugh. This band is easily, like I said, one of my all-time favorite punk bands. So I urge you guys to give Gizm a listen if you haven't already. And speaking of mayhem, I may as well go ahead and show this. This is, whoa, shit. <laughs> this is uh, De Mysterious Dome Satanus Live. And what you just saw is the, uh, the records almost falling out because they don't fit into the jacket properly. Anyways, um, yeah, I've had this for a while, never showed it until now. This is um, them playing the album in full live for the very first time. Um, I, I, I don't know if this was kind of cleaned up. Uh, I would think it was because it sounds great. Even if this was straight from the soundboard, um, without any overdubbing, I would be blown away by how great this sounds. Um, but I'm sure there was some sort of overdubbing. Anyways, my records are on like a baby shit kind of color that are supposed to be gold, which I don't know, doesn't really come off as gold to me, but whatever. Anyway, Day Mysterious Dome Satanus is one of my all time favorite albums. And um, I don't know, it's really cool hearing this live version because I actually saw them play this in its entirety live. Um, it's actually one of the last uh, concerts that I went to with my friend Curly who passed away some time ago. So this is really special for me. Um, also, I did a review of this, um, the actual album for its anniversary. So go check that out too. Next record I'm going to show you, this is the Moss Icon discography record. This is super nice. I'm not sure why it took me so long to show this to you guys, but um, yeah, Moss Icon was a highly influential band in the punk and hardcore scene. Um, they actually really influenced what emo became. Um, well, what emo was back then, not what the fuck you guys call emo now. You can clearly hear their influence on a lot of bands. Bands from Swing Kids to The Refused, all the way to bands like fucking, uh, fucking Thursday. Like, this band was highly, highly influential. Really nice printed inner sleeves here. Records are all on black, so I won't bother showing you that. 
hopefully the light is not just totally fucking that up, you guys. Yeah, their lyrics are just fucking great. A lot of them are very political. Um, a lot of them having to do with the occupation of Guatemala. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. I, I can't speak highly enough about this band. They were a bit experimental for a hardcore band. They were almost uh, like if a hardcore band was obsessed with Joy Division. Um, their songs are really odd, kind of disjointed, but just... They had such a cool sound, and um, it's interesting. They started around the same time that um, Fugazi started, and you can definitely hear the um, the similarities between the two bands. And I don't know, it's bizarre, but yeah, if you like Fugazi, give Moss Icon a shot. And uh, that's going to do it for this edition of Records and Ramblings. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Uh, as usual, thank you for living, thank you for loving, thank you for being you, and I'll see you guys next time. All right? Peace out. Boy!